The Arc Furnace is a pretty hot and dirty beast. That's why it's out here. Would be cool though if you could operate it from indoors. Automatically. We toss something in, it turns on, it smells. That would be fine. Well, then... Go here and do it. We define the Arc Furnace. And then... Oh. This thing is only for cooling. There. Now this entire cooling block will just... Go down here. And here we are free to do more things. Could it really be this simple? Turn it on and activate? Hmm, apparently not. However, don't go to your source code. Because the problem very often is just the cabling. Look, the logic isn't connected. And now it is, and... Oh, it's already glowing. So it turned on. Aha. The logic is turning it on, and the logic is activating it. That's why it's glowing like this the whole time. What you can't hear, because there's no atmosphere, is that it's doing clack 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 the whole time. It's just turning on the whole, uh, again, 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 and that's pretty annoying. Uh, if there's some atmosphere here, it's, it's okay. We're already done. This is already the entire automation, but we want to do it eligibly. So let's do it. But first, to see what that's like. Yep. And there it comes in again. We just want to find out if there's something in the input slot. So I'm saying load batch slot into register R0 from any and all arc furnaces. I only have one, so I don't care. I could also use the LBNS approach, you know. Um, but how do I know the slot? Of course, by looking up the structure. Not the kit, the structure. And we have the import slot, index 0, and the export slot, index 1. And here, the import slot and export slot both have the information occupied and all that. So I'm finding out whether there's something in the import slot of the arc furnace. And then the arc furnace shall be on and activated. So let's see if that works. It is already off. Okay. Will it turn on? Yep. It turned on. It's activated. Spitting out the ingot and... Spitting out the ingot. So now we have the elegant and clean solution, which even saves us Power low. the electricity that would be wasted when this thing is on but not doing anything. The base electricity, you know? That's all. That's how quick that was. Speaking about saving power, 200 watts for the computer, and I forget to turn it off every time. Would be nice if, if it would turn on and off automatically as I get closer, right? And for that, I just installed a proximity sensor. Zero. Distance. That's not... that's too close. One. No. Two. Two is fine. Name it. Put it in there. Set it to value two. In case I accidentally click on it, it should just be set to the optimal value that I've determined. And then load into register R0 from this device, whether it is currently firing, whether it's activated. Here again you can see the values, proximity sensor, activate, setting. So is it being set now? Yep, 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 yep. Now let's define the computer also, since we want to turn it on and off. And then write it down here, SBN computer computer PC on R0. Does this work? It does. Haha. Hey, what about all the electricity up here? 50 watts, 100 watts. That's being wasted when we're out there mining. Would be cool if this could turn off when we're not here. Hmm. An occupancy sensor will do the trick. There. Now, for the lights. It's important to, to pick the right one. That's the one. That should be everything. Right batch to all those devices on R0. Does it work? Export. And leave the premises. Yep, that's it. 
Automatic Light. As a bonus, let's um, do some automated oxygen canister filling that doesn't explode our station. There. And since we're in a hurry, we want to use an active vent, so we have to control the pressure of this pipe also. The passive vent just excretes everything that doesn't fit, uh, that we don't want. And yeah, that's that would be for our canister. Which canister type? Smart canister or normal? We can measure that. Yep. Everything should be everything should be named properly, or two station, or two station can storage, or two station vent, and the other one furnace filtration thingy, so we don't run into problems, right? We don't want that problem. Yep. There, our basic program structure: start, yields, jump start, and up here we have prepared the devices: active vent, the name of it, canister storage, the name of it. Yep. So, this one and that one both shall work. There's just a little problem. Um, we want to react to the canister, right? So, for example, item gas canister oxygen. Then we know which pressure to set. But there's also the, ca the canister nitrogen. Or just the general canister. Which one shall we react to? Well, it's simple, because there's also the smart canister, and of this we only have one. So we just have to detect, is something in there, and if something's in there, is it this one? If it's not this one, it must be one or the other. But before we do anything meaningful, let's first test everything. Uh, we have the can store, canister storage, and I want to read from... Um, I'm just guessing that this will be correct. This is probably correct. From the first slot that it may have, into register R0, whether it's occupied. And then the mode of the thing shall be accordingly. I mean, the filtration mode. I will turn this on. And O2 station is selected in the drop down. Okay, export. Aha, uh -huh. now what happens if I put a canister in? Very good, so that's working. Here we can see the article, gas tank storage. Index zero is the slot, and I can see whether it's occupied. I can also see the occupant hash. Now let's talk about the different values that we get. Uh, occupant hash is what we already know, the device hash. It's, um, it's this, except not for the gas tank storage, but for the canister that we find in there. This, in, a, in the hashed form, is this number. So this number is what we're checking for. That's the uh, occupant hash. We also have the um, prefab hash. Actually, I'm not sure right now what that is. Uh, but I know what the reference ID means. That is the one objective number in the world. If I have two canisters which are completely identical, one will have one number, the other will have another number. And if I, for example, remove a device from the wall, and then put it there again, the new device constructed there on the wall will indeed be a new number, even though it seems like I'm only putting something on the wall and taking it into my hand back and, and then put it on the wall again back and forth. It is changing its ID every time. So let's do something else. Uh, I'm finding out whether it's occupied by the occupant hash. And if the occupant hash is equal to smart can, then this will be a 1, and the mode will be 1, then, accordingly. I wonder if this works. Good. Ah, it's distinguishing. Very good. So let's define, then, what the target pressure shall be. We start with the assumption that it shall be 0. Then we find out whether there is a canister in there. If there is no canister in there, if occupied is equal to zero then we just want to jump down here to execute so that we are doing whatever we are doing with the filtration unit and the active vent uh, based upon the pressure zero however if it is not equal to zero so it is occupied then we want to stay here and we are loading the occupant hash. If the occupant hash is equal uh, to smart canister, we will have a 1 here. And now there's, it's time for a new statement. Select. I'm selecting into target pressure uh, based upon R0, either this value or the other. I'm saying register shall be set to B, 
So this register here shall be set to B. You can see that here. It's the second to, la second to last value. If A, R0 here, smart canister, is non-zero. So if it is a smart canister, we will select this value in there. Otherwise, this one. Now, the filtration device has lots of logic values. Um, because it has two outputs, so we can basically divide the amount of values here by two. And we can, for example, find out pressure input and also pressure output and pressure output 2. Output 2 is not what we're interested in, that's uh, the waste gases, that's where the passive vent is. I want to find out what the pressure is on the canister side. Here, I'm loading into register R0 from the device where the chip is housed in, the pressure output. Uh, and then I'm writing a logic value into a register, which happens to be the same because I no longer need the pressure output. If the pressure output is greater than target pressure, then uh, hmm, that's actually what I the opposite less than. If it's less than the target pressure, then I want a one, and so I can now just say uh, write to DB uh, mode a zero. Do we have mode already somewhere here? No, continue not. So this should mean uh, as long as the pressure is less than what we want, it will be pumping, else it will not. This doesn't do much right now since the active vent isn't yet on, but uh, let's see what, what happens. Nothing's happening because we have target pressure zero. Uh -huh. Sounds good. I want to change the approach here slightly here because I also want to control the active vent this makes things slightly more complicated in case there's no canister I want to find out what is the pressure on the input side of the filtration unit if it is greater than zero then I will have a one in this register and then I will say the vent shall pump out of the pipe because I want to evacuate the pipe. I don't want anything in there. Just to be safe. Just, um, you know, for perfectionism. But when there's a canister in there, and we have already set the mode, then what, what I'm doing here is I'm loading once again the pressure input. And I'm saying if it is less than the target pressure of 9000 or whatever, then this shall be a 1. And so I will then pump into the pipe. Let's see what happens. Now we should have our filtration, uh, our O2 station already. Huh. Okay, that's a bit off-putting. This should fix it. I just inserted this above uh, the active vent stuff down here. I'm saying a branch relative by four lines. One, two, three, four. Or I could just say branch to start. That would also work. Branch to start if uh, target pressure is equal to zero. Because then we don't want to do anything with the vent. Aha. Uh -huh. So what happens now? Maybe I should save this, huh? Will it stop in time? Uh, that's a bit weird. I guess what was happening is the pressure was going into this pipe. The device thought, well, the pipe is under pressure, so I will stop. The pipe uh, flowed into this, um, into the container, and so turned on again. Pure oxygen. And it's filling more and more. I guess we can remedy the problem with the turning on and off by increasing the volume of the pipe here. Which also brings some danger, because the more volume this pipe has, the more high pressure gas may be in there, residual gas, and so if we insert a canister it will be hit with that pressure. So what we have currently is rather safe. I don't know how safe it is, so let's see what happens if I put in the already full small canister. Okay, now it's overpressurized. And is currently in the process of exploding. Not something we want to witness too closely.
Nice side effect. We got some coal. So that's it. This is how you can do some nice automation and also be rather safe if you know what you're doing. And of course it's just the most basic version of this device. You can do so much more luxury with the back pressure regulator, with some inline tanks, with uh, end support. This pipe could be emptied out when it's not needed. So many possibilities. Have fun.